If you have one of these at home and you're quite frustrated with them, you're interested in privacy and you want these to work even when your internet doesn't work and you're a bit of a geek, then you'll be interested in Raspi. Raspi is a full offline open source collection of components that replace your voice assistant. This was pioneered by a very smart guy called Michael Hansen, PhD and you can find more information about him in the link in the description down below. There are massive corporations like Amazon, Apple, and Google. So how can someone come up with a product or a solution or a piece of software that actually excels those expectations? In this video, we're gonna look at the documentation and understand how this works, see a bit of the architecture, and the pros and cons, the advantages of using the system versus using the big corporation ones. Let's understand first the fundamental advantage of Raspi. Two things here at heart. One, privacy. So all of your data is processed locally. It's not going to a cloud connection, especially if the company's revenue is all ad-centric, for example, like Google's. The second reason is local control. Local control meaning that you can work even without an internet connection. The local connection makes so much more sense because as you can see from this diagram over here, instead of sending the message over to the cloud, you can actually compute it locally. And another big advantage of this product is that you can actually fully customize it. So instead of you learning how to use your voice assistant. For example, this HomePod mini, I think is quite terrible. It never understands me. Maybe it's just my accent, but you can like customize voice recognition and wake words and do a lot more to make it a unique piece of equipment that will power your smart home. You can also run it in Docker and virtually. The hardware that I recommend that you use is at least a Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B and you're going to need some microphone system. You can get, for example, a cheap microphone off online, plug it in, or a conference call microphone from Amazon, up to you really. You can also run this on a desktop, on a laptop, on a server, even on a Raspberry Pi Zero. It is recommended that you have four gigs SD drive minimum. This product has been specifically tested on a PlayStation Eye camera, Respink 4, so if you want to really match the same experience that the contributors were getting out of it, then you can get that product. If you want me to make another video, trying this out, installing it, let me know in the comment section down below. I am looking forward to doing this as a project, but I will put it on the channel if there's a demand for it. And remember to like and subscribe this video so you don't miss the next one. Now let's do a deep dive in the documentation, link in the description down below. You can see the integrations, most popular integrations are Home Assistant, Node-RED, OpenHab, but there's also, there are also many more going there. So uh, a lot of this is produced via JSON, so Node-RED loves JSON, so you don't really hypothetically need Home Assistant to get this connected up and work. It also works with MQTT and HTTP, for example, protocols, so that's amazing in terms of the uh, compatibility. Once you've got it installed, the user interface is something like this. So I'm looking forward to getting this. So you can listen for commands. So you can play recording button over here. You can try and test out the wake up functionality. So the wake up is for example, hey, and whatever you say to wake up your voice assistant. The and text to intent is actually recognizing exactly what you're saying. So it's transcribing what you've just said by voice and it's putting it over here. And then what it does, and this is the cool part, is that it maps the actual uh, thing that the action that's going to take. So in the example that it's showing here, it, it says, turn on the living room lamp, and then it maps. So it knows, okay, living room lamp, it's, it's found that as a keyword, so this is, the, this is the intent. And then the on status is basically the actions we want to do an on action. So you can actually see the JSON that gets generated if you're quite interested in that. Here are the languages that are compatible, English, German, Spanish, French, and you can see the list. It's ever more ex uh, expanding. This is the architecture of Raspi. It's quite important that you understand that to understand all the components and how you can customize them. So as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna need a microphone in. You can have the speaker output, which is gonna be similar to this, so given an output. 
um, we have the HTTP API, we have the MT MQTT broker that's going to sort of manage the messages between the components. We have speech, intent, text to speech, wake word, and dialogue. So those are four, five, six components that are highly customizable, to be honest. Obviously, this is intended for someone that's uh, hands on, a bit of a geek. Um, it's not to the point where any casual user can like pick up this, for example, and use it and plug it in. There are plans to improve it, get it even more streamlined, integrated in the home assistant, perhaps maybe some dedicated hardware in the future. So you never know. But for now, if you're into Home Assistant or Node-RED, I'm pretty sure you can take uh, this project on and it will be actually amazing. So you can see some customization in the wake word page, which gives you an understanding of what type of uh, training you can do to the model. And you can see the actual wake word over here. And, and you can see sort of the profile and the customization that you can actually do. Speech to text is, is similar to a text to speech that you can actually do. Thanks to Nabu Kaza, I'm using this, for example, with these Google Mini. So you can tell basically and announce and broadcast things. Uh, so you can do something similar over here. This also screen over here is quite important. It shows you all of the components and you can actually pick and choose. So it's highly customizable. You can decide to change your speech uh, to text component to something completely different. Another really awesome feature is the training. So you can actually train this voice assistant to respond to anything you want. There's a uh, .ini file called sentences.ini and you can actually use this editor over here. And this tutorial sort of explains how you can actually create your own sentences. So you can see that the square brackets uh, capture a tag which then is referenced and used. So it says, for example, get time. And then you can put in any type of expression that you use or what time it is. It is. Tell me the time. And, and you can build this all up. Obviously, uh, these massive corporations have a huge library of commands. And it is obviously a challenge for you to build your own any command. But thanks to open source and sharing, there is no reason why you can't get a massive library built within the community but you can also add your own which will be uh, fantastic so you can test a lot of these things thanks to the wake up the playing the recording so it's going to play you back what it heard it's going to uh, you can upload wave files with speech recognition this also is the recognizing part so you can see change light state is one of the tags that comes out of this intent recognition and here we've got an example here node red which shows us that you can actually make the call to the local host so that's the ip address of your uh, raspberry and you can actually for example pull the message into node red and you can sort of uh, do all sorts of things as you can see from the debug over here you can get the name color text so this is sort of coming from this intent message so it's uh, relaying it out so you can do the reverse, so you can do text to speech, so you can send a text back again to the local host, um, which is amazing, which we can do obviously with these systems, but you know, you have this cloud based as we talked about previously. So what are my thoughts for the future? I really, really do believe that this can be an absolute game changer in the voice assistant market. We haven't had a great alternative to the free big colossal corporations. There will be some limitations, for example, so it will depend on how you use your voice assistant. So anything that requires some sort of connection. So for example, asking for the weather and or asking anything that would obviously require some sort of um, remote connection, then you would sort of lose your advantage. But if you're using your voice assistant predominantly, for example, to do tasks like set a timer or something like while well, turning things off or turning things off, then this is, will be an, an amaz amazing solution. Cost-wise, these Echoes are very cheap, for example, around 25 pounds, especially when on a discount, like in Black Friday, you can also get used versions of these. The Apple HomePod Mini are quite more expensive, but design-wise, sort of these are very nice and nice to look at. Obviously, having a Raspberry Pi around with a hacky um, conference called microphone on top is not going to actually look good as any of these products over here 
So how, what the challenge is going to be for this uh, product to go you know, wide in the market is how do you actually make it a bit more appealing? How do you hide it in a way? Or uh, maybe have some integrated speakers in the wall system. That would be an amazing option if you had that option, if you were doing a refurbishment and you wanted some integrated speakers. So that's going to be uh, food for thought uh, for the future. Could the software run on other devices in the future? We'll see. Again, if you want to see a full installation of this product, let me know in the comment section down below. I will leave you in the next video. This is Geo from Smart Makers.